Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming back. Laszlo Montgomery here with another Chinese saying, and a musical one at that. Today, we're going to look at Ren Qin Ju Wang. Spoiler alert. Like last week, this one sort of ends on a bit of a downer. And let me say right up front, this is a Cheng Yu that you hope you never have to use. Ren Qin Ju Wang. Let's pick it apart. Ren is a person, or in this case, a man. Qin, once again, we run into this character. A Qin is a Chinese lute, or zither. Like you recall from the recent episode, Dui Niu Tan Qin, to play a lute to an ox. And Ju means all, or entirely, or together. And the character Wang means to die. So, Ren Qin, Ju Wang, person, Qin, together, die. Well, other than the pre-knowledge that this story isn't going to end well, it's hard to extract the meaning out of those four syllables. So let's go find the key that unlocks this door. The chu zi, or derivation, of this Chinese saying is one we never used before. It came out during the Nanbei Chao, the Southern and Northern Dynasties period, 420 to 589. This uh, followed the uh, Eastern Jin. The work is called the Shi Shuo Xin Yu. This was credited to one Liu Yi Qing of the Liu Song, first of the Southern Dynasties. The Shi Shuo Xin Yu was a book of anecdotes about all the various literati who lived during the preceding Jin Dynasty. This story is special. I know I always say that, but the people in it, a father and his two sons, were legends in their own time. The father was featured once as the topic of CHP episode 96, which told the story of the life of calligrapher extraordinaire Wang Xijie. He lived during the Eastern Jin Dynasty from 321 to 379, back when the capital was in Jinkang, uh, which is modern-day Nanjing. And I'm not going to say he was the greatest calligrapher of all time, but he's usually the pet answer when everyone asks, you know, who was the greatest uh, calligrapher in ancient China. His work, the Lan Ting Shu, or Preface to the Poems Collected from the Orchid Pavilion, is a major work from ancient times and was copied by many who followed. Wang Xijie was serving as an official down in Shaoxing, when he did this masterwork. I and mean, if any originals of the Lan Ting Shu exist, they're tucked away in someone's private collection. It's said the Taizong Emperor, co-founder of the Tang Dynasty, insisted on being buried with uh, an original. So Wang Xijie is traditionally called China's greatest calligrapher. Greatest or not, he did get the moniker of Shu Sheng, or the Saint of Calligraphy. An anonymous buyer in China back in 2010 forked over $46 million for a reproduction of Wang Xijie's work. It was done in the Tang. So you might say he's quite respected in the world of Chinese culture, and even more so in the world of Chinese calligraphy. Well, after all this hype, I regret to say Wang Xijie isn't actually in our story today. But two of his seven sons were... And many who are expert in calligraphy say the youngest son, Wang Xianzhi, is just as good as his saintly father. The older son, Hui Zhi, was also renowned in his day, but to most, Wang Xijie and Wang Xianzhi are the two more familiar names. But one day in his prime, Wang Xianzhi passed away suddenly. In his early 40s, when he was alive, he would often relax by playing the qin, and he became quite proficient in this instrument. If he ever played it to an ox, I can't say for sure. So when brother Hui Zhi attended the funeral of his younger brother, and he approached the beer, he didn't shed a single tear. He just stood there before his brother's coffin silently. Next to the coffin lay Wang Xianzhi's qin, and Hui Zhi reached for it, and tried, in vain, I might add, to tune it or extract some familiar melody from it. No matter how hard he tried, Hui Zhi couldn't get the instrument to yield anything. So with tears welling up in his eyes, he smashed it to the ground and cried to his dearly departed brother that both his qin, or lute, had died along with him. Both the man and the lute 
had perished. And let me close this story by saying Wang Huizhi himself died of a broken heart only a month later. The Ren Qin, the man and the lute, Ju, both are together. Wang died. Ren Qin, Ju Wang, the sad story of the brothers Wang, sons of. One of China's greatest men of letters, Wang Xijie, CHP episode ninety-six. If you wanna hear a little more about the Shu Sheng, the calligraphy saint, and the times he lived in, he was one of the many literary greats to come out of that most literary of cities, Shaoxing, in Zhejiang Province. So, as I said, this is a Chengyu. We all hope we never have to use, but in cases where you see. Some memento or other object that brings back memories of a dear one who, in life, possessed that item. This Chengyu, Ren Qin Ju Wang, is an expression of that great sadness and grief you might feel when you see something that you know reminds you of your loss. So, so that's the skinny on that one. Sorry, I can't drag this one out any more than I did. I think perhaps. This was more of a brief history lesson on Wang Xijie than anything else. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this nice musical Changyu. Ren Qin, Ju Wang, the man and the Qin, both have perished. Okay, without further ado, or any commercials or needless filler material, let's just call it a day right here and now. This is Laszlo Montgomery. Yeah, I know, same guy as the China History Podcast and China Vintage Hour. All part of the sprawling teacup media empire. Go check all that stuff out at the usual places, and of course, teacup dot media. And if you let me, well, toot my horn for a moment, this exact same Chinese sayings podcast is also available fleet wide in the in-flight entertainment system of fantastic and wonderful cafe Pacific Airways. Okay, see you next time, everyone. At least I hope so. I'll have yet another nice musical chung you for your ever-growing collection. Take care, all.